I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And this is really a special journey, only for joy. And I have a visitor today who knows exactly what that means. <laughs> Robert, <laughs> Robert <Aloha>. is a <laughs> dear friend, and Kongi Fa Choi is Honolulu's way of saying Chinese New Year. Yeah, Kongi Fa Choi, yeah. Yeah, so say, yeah. tell us what it is in Chinese. Well, the actual original meaning for the Kongi Fa Choi, it actually means wish you rich. And it was used by many can Cantonese, or people in Hong Kong. But the rest of Chinese, they actually use Xin Nian Kuai Le in Chinese Mandarin. That means Happy New Year. So Kong Yi Po Chai actually is wish you rich a fortune. Yeah, so. uh, oh, this was a gift from one Chinese New Year. And it had the tag on it that said Kong Yi Po Chai. Uh, maybe the other side. Let me see. It had the little tag on it. Said "Come here for joy." Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it blocked the the J portion. I don't see that. Maybe the top, the red color one. Yeah, yeah. in Chinatown, yeah. right now, everybody has. Okay. Yeah, it's got some some reflection. Yeah, yeah. So, uh. Kong Hee Fa is actually is Cantonese pronunciation. If in Mandarin, it's a Gong Si Fa Chai. That means mm -hmm. congratulations, you got fortune. Yeah. So yeah. again, in official Chinese Mandarin, Happy New Year is Xin Nian Kuai Le. The China, China, Happy New Year, Chinese New Year, is celebrated all over the world. Yes. People love, love, love. Chinese New Year. Now, what is the difference in Chinese New Year and Western New Year? Okay, well, actually, Chinese New Year, New Year is being celebrated in China about probably about 3,800 years already because it was agricultural life. People use the lunar calendars to calculate. So, it's been celebrated Chinese New Year all these years, you know, about 3,800 years ago. The first time China actually Chinese celebrated Western New Year's is actually start from 1912. Oh. That's actually after, after the, after Sun Yixian actually from Honolulu, Sun, yeah. Sun Yixian, the revolution yeah. overthrowing mm -hmm. the Manchurian dynasty, and he established Republic of China. And that actually the first year of uh, Chinese uh, Western New Year celebrate, you know, is 1912, January 1st. Yeah. So, but Chinese New Year is way longer than that. And because China was a, such a great, you know, big country yeah. in ancient times. So almost majority Asian country, they are celebrate this, but they call it as a lunar New Year instead of using. Oh. Uh, so they use the lunar calendar do the calendar too, yeah. So yeah. like in Korea, Vietnam, you know, uh, you know, in Singapore, you know, Indonesia, there's a lot of Asian countries they all celebrate. And the same do the calendars, but they call it Lunar New Year. Yeah. But it, it's not like ours is the first of January. And is theirs more like a on a lunar calendar would be uh, the first day of spring for um, in the Americans, which yes. is March. It is dynamic. Yes. There's no fixed date. Every year different because lunar every calendar. Year every year different. It go by the, the 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 moon, right? The lunar calendars. Mm -hmm. So the lunar calendars calendars January first. It right. is you know we call well, it Chinese January, year. Yeah. 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 So so every year sometimes it end of January, sometimes beginning of February, sometimes mid February. So every year you know it's structured every year different. Yeah. So, but it's the biggest holiday. You know, it is. It's a big holiday <laughs> in China. China you know. world, sure. Yeah, yeah. Because it's celebration for that, it lasts at least two weeks until until the first full moon, which is Chinese New Year, you know, start from January first. It actually celebration until January fifteenth. We call Lantern Festival. That's the end of the celebration. So it, it lasts for a long time. Yeah. Well, at least in in Honolulu, it's at least two weeks. Mm, yeah. 
two to yeah. three weeks, not normal. Yeah. In in <laughs> in the ancient times, sometimes it lasts for more than two weeks, you know, a month. Yeah. Yeah. So actually it's called the the character, Chinese character also say spring festival. Chunjie. Yeah, spring festival. So that would be the full moon. No, Chun Spring Festival is actually Chinese New Year. Same thing. Yeah. So we mentioned Sun Yat Sen. Mm. And for everybody that's listening, the statue of Sun Yat Sen is right next to the Hawaii Theater. Right in, in China. Actually, in Chinese Cultural Plaza. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right there. And, yeah. and Cultural Plaza, yes. Yeah. Both places. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, that's a bigger one in the Cultural Plaza. One so, of the Cultural Plaza. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. So. And of course, we tend to think of Sun Yat Sen as ours because he went to Ilani School, and whatnot. And the Hawaiians spent so much money uh, sending to China for the revolution. So, yeah, Hawaii is, you know, he's ours. <laughs> well, he is a father of the Republic of China. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he brought in the Western democracy to China, right? So, so it's a. That's why know, I said he's ours. Yeah. <laughs> it's greatest, greatest, you know, person in the recent Chinese history because he's the one changing the whole system mm -hmm. in China. Yeah, yeah. So. And yeah, and change those horrible things they did to women's feet. The, the, <laughs> took them off the women's feet, the shoes, you know. What were they called that binding the women's feet? Actually, that's Manchurian custom. Mm -hmm. So the way they do that is, what I, when I read the history is because you tie your foot to almost three inches. So you make you, first of all, you, it's tall. It make you look taller. When you walk, you also make women more femaleized. You can shake, shake. And that's the way. Oh. And only rich family can do that because it's a poor family. You got to go to the farm. You cannot walk that way. You can't. You yeah, can't you do farming with. Yeah. 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 That, so that is a, you know, the privilege for the rich family, wealthy family, because nobody can afford to do that. Yeah, so, so your wealthy family, yes, you do that, but it's torture. <laughs> you end yeah. up tying your foot. Just <laughs> a lot of it is torture. It is torture. Yeah. yeah. So. But that was one of the first things I learned about Sun Yat Sen. Was... Yeah, because she, he doesn't like it. When yeah. he was young, he saw his families. You know, the female had to go through that, and you know, he feel, oh no, we got to change this kind of custom. It's terrible. <laughs> so. Yeah. He. Um, but I do. For anybody, just take a time. Take the time. When you go to the cultural plaza, there's a plaque under the statue and you can read all about Sun Yat Sen. And then there's a little one at the airport and then this one by the Hawaii Theater. See, I told you, we love him, just took him in. And I think there's one. Yeah, he's a great, great philosopher because he pro promote the whole world, everybody, a brother and sister. Mm -hmm. He promoted peace for the whole world. Yeah, that, that's his, you know, even yeah. though he, he actually he was a doctor, medical mm -hmm. doctor. Yeah. yeah. But his love and care about you, the people, he promote the whole world. That's why in saying the statue in Chinese country, brother, the whole world are peace. We are all families. In all family, world. yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> so now, you said you have lived here a long in Honolulu a long time. Yeah, I actually moved to Honolulu uh, 1988 until now. So actually, it's my, the, the place I stayed the longest. It's, it's, it's longer than the time I spent in Taiwan. <laughs> so where are you from originally? I'm from Taiwan. Yeah, from Taiwan. so yeah, I came after I finished my college, I went to California State University for my master's degree in business management to start with that first. Yeah. So that's 40 years ago, <laughs> 40 years ago. <laughs> so, so I spent two thirds of my life journey in USA and 90% of the time pretty much in Honolulu, Hawaii, yeah, 30 some years. Yeah, so. I have a question here. Do Asian people travel 
Oh yeah, sure. It's, Actually, it's very important for Asian people to travel during New Year's. Yeah, let me explain a little bit. In the world history, this is the biggest migration of traffic in the world. You're talking about billions of people travel around the nation because New Year's Eve is the biggest day for the whole family to unify together. They have New Year's, New Year's Eve dinners. So all the family, they left home, all the people they left home to big city to work. But New Year's Eve, everybody rushed home to unify with a family member to enjoy the big you know, dinner. That is very, very important event. So people left the big metropolitans, go back to their hometown. So the big city become ghost town. It was so quiet because everybody went back. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, what about now that we have the pandemic and it's worldwide? How do they how do they come together for this time? All of these people. What about well together with the pandemic? How do they handle that? According to news, the government are trying to do a lot of uh, you know education, informational. Uh, 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 education to teach people, you know, just do a small gathering because this is a, a big, you know, uh, uh, disasters and we need to keep social distance. So this year's celebration might be smaller, just like our recent the football, right? You have smaller gathering with your very close family member or, or friend only, but don't do it big, you know, you know, uh, uh, gathering. Yeah. So I think this year probably will be, you know, reduced quite a bit. Taiwan actually is situation pretty, pretty good, you know, because what happened is they managed the, the pandemic pretty well. You know, can you imagine they have about 24 million population, but now they only have a couple hundred cases, you know, so they managed the pandemic they very, very, well. very yeah. well. Yeah, so I actually working with a Taiwanese consulate here and a community member while working in the you know, 2020 census, we actually do a lot of donation fundraising that helping the tender governor's office, helping the you know, community. They, we buy a lot of PPE, that like mask or sanitizers to help the community. But in Taiwan, actually, they, ha they have very good management of this pandemic. So my, my niece just got married about two, three months ago and they have a big party, no problem at all. So, <laughs> so I, I think they manage very well. Yeah. So Hawaii, mm -hmm. we are islands similar to Taiwan. I think if everybody all work together with the government, we all keep social distance, wear your mask, make sure you wash your hand often. I think we can, we can put this under control a lot faster than any other state in mainland because we have a big well, ocean, you know, separate. Yeah, so. yeah well, it, it, that helps. <laughs> yeah. but, Tell me, now, when did you come to Hawaii after you went to school in California and then you came to Hawaii? Well, I went to California after I finished my must, first master's degree in business management. I actually went to Texas m and for my second master's degree in computer science. And after that, before I came to Hawaii, actually while I was working, uh, I was transferred to Japan stay in Japan for almost, you know, two, three years. I was the first person went to Japan to set up Apple Computer Service Center to help all the US federal agency, especially military. Because there's no global warranty for Apple computer at that time. So, and after that, at 88, you know, I changed my job from uh, American company to uh, Mitsubishi. And they actually transferred me back to USA because uh, that time, uh, Congress passed the regulation buy America only. So <laughs> all the U.S. federal agency and military had to buy American product. You know, then I was transferred back to state. But I didn't expect to come to Honolulu. I thought we would go back to mainland. And my boss said, "You know, you stay in Honolulu, closer to Japan. I can come to visit you easy, and <laughs> <laughs> you can go back to mainland. You know, very easy. So that's why I in charge of North America, you know, operations, but." I, you know, I don't station station in Maine. I stay in Honolulu. That's why I came to Hawaii by accident, you know, <laughs> and it's become the longest place I stay. I love this. It's great. I was gonna say paradise. this is so much better than the mainland. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah. So I think now, that's but we saw 
<laughs> Mitsubishi in Nagasaki. Oh, huge, huge, huge. Yeah, actually, it is probably the top three biggest enterprise in Japan. Mitsubishi, uh, Mitsui, Sumitomo, those are the big enterprise. Yeah, so, and I fortunately, you know, I was able to involve myself into the culture over there. Yeah, Dr. Sengi Sen, yes. he actually stayed in Japan too, to, yeah. to help, to fund, you know, raise the funding for revolution. So he actually stayed in Japan quite a bit of time yeah, at, at Kobe. Mm -hmm. So he has a very, you know, close contact in not only Honolulu, but also in Japan. So I was able to see, you know, where he did it, you know, and, and I, you know, it's kind of a very interesting life journey that, you know, God arranged this and able to expect I come to Hawaii, which in my mind, so Hawaii is only for, you know, honeymoon or for vacation only. <laughs> I, 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 you didn't I, think yeah. that there were real people that actually lived here, huh? Yeah. The yeah. same thing, I work for U.S. Uh, Census Bureau, they transfer, you know, even though I report I work in LA, but I say, Robert, you handle Honolulu side, <laughs> in charge of Hawaii. So I, I in charge of the whole Hawaii Chinese, you know, uh, territory and you know, community stuff. Yeah, so, so. Well, oh my goodness, there's so many languages in, in Hawaii, in Honolulu, let me put it that way. So many different Asian languages. In, yeah. in Chinatown itself, there's seven different Asian languages. In that I space. Yeah. Just China itself, we have more than 100 different dialects. It's mm -hmm. totally different. Even when I was in Taiwan, at home, we speak Taiwanese. That's totally different with Mandarin. So when I first time went to, went to school, I don't understand what the teacher talking about because they talk differently. <laughs> <laughs> they, talk, they speak Mandarin. Right? So let's give me an opportunity. I learned Mandarin too. The other thing is, my parents, when they were in Taiwan, that's during the World War II, they actually, they were Japanese because Taiwan was ruined by Japan for 50, 51 years. So they were under Japanese education. So I learned Japanese when I was young kids, I don't even know that was Japanese. Yeah, so, so the environment gives you opportunity to learn something new, especially language, yeah. and mm -hmm. you naturally you learn it. That benefit me, so when I go to Japan, a lot of vocabulary I know already because, oh, I learned those when I was young kids. <laughs> so so, so that, that's different, yeah, so. So what are you teaching now at um, HPU? I actually teach uh, in computer science courses, including like, you know, uh, management information system, project management system analysis. And, you know, it is my hobby, I try to, you know, uh, share my knowledge experience to all the young generation. And I think teaching, actually I've been, I, I have taught in university for almost 30 years since I started working there. Yeah. So you even said, in Japan. You said teaching the young generation. I thought that this young generation came into the world knowing everything about this digital world. Young people just know everything. You know how they create constantly, I'm sorry. You know, like they, they were born with it or something. I don't know. That, that is the, the theory for that is just like you were born in USA, you know how to speak, but you may not know how to write, how to know the grammar, how to, you know, use English properly. You still got to go to school to learn English. Same thing. Right. You know how to use digital, you don't know how to computer, but there's a lot of theory, you know, uh, behind the scene, and you got to learn that and give you better skill. You can, you know, improve yourself. Project management, that's another totally different stuff. You know, in order to make the project, you know, we have so many projects in town. The biggest one is our rail system. Oh, but the dear. project management philosophy, if you, don't ma if you don't manage it properly, you could lose millions or billions of dollars. And that's very, very important, you know, uh, philosophy. Well, they're, they're good at losing money, so they, they got that one. Yeah, they're yeah. <laughs> really good at that. Uh, yeah. Speak to, uh, the challenging one thing I want to you know mention to you is I you know just I mentioned about everybody go home together together during the New Year's Eve, right? And January first, that's another big travel time is everybody go to visit either your friend or your boss, you know your relatives. That's January first. You go over it. We call walk spring, walk spring. This means the spring festival you 
when you know you go to visit all your friend, uh, good friend, relatives, even your boss, and you, you bring some gift to visit. That's January first. But January second in the lunar calendars is a time you go back to your mom's home. So the wife they will get excited. The night of January first, I, I I used to saw my mom or oh, very busy packing small suitcase and some you know uh, 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 souvenir and to take us with my father. We all go to visit my you know my mom's father's you know a, a, a mother the parents yeah. So it's countryside. So we we went to over that's almost fifty years ago. I went there when I walk in, get out. The tricycle at that time, they still use the tricycle. You know, the people, the human riding the tricycle to take you to countryside. When you get out of the tricycle, ready to walk into the village, everybody know you are so and so's grand grandson from what city you come back home to visit. So that's why it's a big travel time from New Year's Eve. People travel home. January first, people go to visit their friends, relatives. You know, in town. January second. You had to travel back to your mom's home, and then stay there a couple of days, and then January fifth, you know, around fifth, you go back, yeah. and all the business, all the company, they start the business on January sixth. So, so everything's that, closed until January sixth. Uh, the business, yeah, a, a lot of business so you, that way, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in in the agricultural life, they still celebrating. Or temple, they have lots of different type of celebration. Another interesting is New Year's Eve. Everybody had to clean their house, sweep, and before that, actually, you know, the legend, the myth say, in the heaven, they sent God to station your home. You know, in the ancient time, you cook by use big stove, you put charcoal in. Each one has you know, a god, guardians stationed in your house. Before New Year's Eve, those gods will go back to heaven to report to Jade Dynasty, Jay Dynasty, the emperor of Jade Dynasty, what happened to this house? Are they behave good citizens or not? So that's the old tradition. When I was young kids, I experienced that. Then you want them to say good word about your family. So you had to buy some, okay. some, yeah. yeah. Prepare some food and see them off. You know, give us just a like given some you know gift. You know, say some good things. So next year we have a good life, right? So they go back to return back to heavens to report to J Dynasty Emperor. Then January fifth they return. We gotta welcome them back. You gotta so a lot of ceremony. You go to temple, do a lot of different kind of stuff. So <laughs> that that tradition gradually fade out. Because industrial life, you know, so I, but I, I did experience that very interesting, you know, custom. Yeah. Now tell me, speaking of customs, you said this is the year of the ox. What does that mean? Well, actually, again, let's go back to J Dynasty. The, the myths say the emperor of J Dynasty, the heavens, he invite a lot of guests to visit, uh, uh, you know, his palace. And they go by the order of whoever come to visit. First, you will be the first one. So at that time, the ox actually very due diligent. He walk very, you know, you know, ox working hard. So he very due diligent. As soon as he receive invitation, he start walking hard. And the rat asks, the region say, they ask the ox, can I, can you give me a ride? You know, I can go with you together. So Ox say, oh, fine, sure. So he, he ride on Ox's head. But as soon as they reach there, almost get into the palace, the red jump down. So he become number one. So the first one the, is, is red. Ox is second. And ah. the third is tiger. You know, and then rabbit. You know, so total 12 you know, uh, animals for the simple. And the myth say that was because the speed you know, who come to uh, uh, the palace of the J, you know, emperor, J Dynasty emperor, the first, you will be the first, you know. Yeah. So, so red last year was year of red. This year, year of ox. Yeah. And people say it's a good year because ox 
uh, work, uh, very hardworking, you know, animals, and you know, uh, uh, is very, you know, uh, gener you know, gender, you know, general, you know, generous, you know, kind, soft. So this year might be a a, a good year because good year. Yeah, people well, also make, working make hard. Make sure it was a good year. Yeah. After Hope last so. year was it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> terrible. <laughs> the so, pandemic. So we, is, yeah. yeah. We are all going to say that the ox is going to bring us a good year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we all hope so because we need yeah. it. We need it. We need to stabilize, <laughs> you know, uh, our our economy by you know you know controlling yeah. you know the pandemic. Yeah, this is you know. Yeah, we can use, with it. Yeah, we can use a good year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. So we have twelve. So that in in America. Then we had the same year, so that when you were born was somebody figures out that that was the year of such and such, right? I don't know who makes the decision. <laughs> yeah, but listen, we are just about out of time, and it's been a real pleasure with you spending time with you, and you will come back. Then we can do all twelve of the <laughs> of the animals, every one of them. But sure, sure. You will yeah. come back. We have we're just about out of time, and I have so enjoyed this time with you. Well, thank you very much. Aloha, Happy New Year, and Kong Hei Yeah, thank you. Happy New Year.